Let's do some cooking. We had a dinner party last night and one of the things that I made and served was homemade garlic naan and there was none left on the table. This recipe came out perfect so I'm going to share with you guys how I made it. To begin, we're going to mix together our yeast mixture, cover it with a damp cloth and let it rest for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we're going to add in the rest of our ingredients and you can either knead it by hand or use a stand mixer and we're going to knead for about 10 to 15 minutes until your dough is nice and smooth. Add your dough to a floured bowl, cover it with a damp cloth, and let it rest in a warm place for about an hour and a half. Once your dough has doubled in size, we're going to separate it into about 14 mini dough balls, and we're going to cover them and let them rest for another 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, we're going to roll out our dough about a quarter of an inch thick, and then we're going to slightly stretch it out, and you want to let it rest for another 10 minutes before you add it to your hot cast iron. Make sure you preheat your cast iron for about 5 minutes on medium heat before you add any of your dough, and we're going to cook our naan for about 2 minutes on each side. Mix together your ghee mixture and brush it on your fresh naan. And for more in-depth instructions, make sure to head to my blog because I was able to touch on so much more there. And you're done. This is my healthiest, easiest hidden veggie chicken soup. Let's go. Add the whole veggies to a pot of water. Let it come to a boil. Drop in the chicken thighs. Skim off any of the foam and generously season with salt. Semi-cover it and let that go for 45 minutes. Take out the chicken and shred it. Take out the whole veggies. Add them to a blender with some of that broth and blend. Add it back into the soup with the shredded chicken. I had leftover boiled potato which I cubed and I'm adding in but you can use pastina as well. Enjoy and follow for more. No one knows how to clean, prep, and stuff an artichoke better than an Italian. Let me show you how it's done. Let's go. Cut the stem off and cut a third way from the top. Take kitchen scissors and snip off the tips. Fan out the artichoke and completely scoop out the choke, which is that fuzzy inside. Submerge them into lemon water and don't forget to peel the stems as well. In a separate bowl, add the breadcrumbs, parmigiano, garlic, olive oil, and parsley. Drain out the water from the artichokes onto a towel, fan them out, and gently add in those breadcrumbs. Add the water and pinot grigio into the baking dish, sprinkle of salt and olive oil on top. Bake and optionally enjoy with some melted butter and follow for more. We just figured out how to make our favorite 15 minute ramen creamy. Buckle up. Step one, good quality chicken stock. We love Bonafide for all of its incredible ingredients, but really it's the flavor for us. Add in some mushrooms, bok choy, soy sauce, fish sauce, garlic, ginger, and eggs. Cover and cook for seven minutes. Add an egg with some Japanese mayo and chili paste to a bowl. When the ramen's done, remove the eggs along with some broth. Add the noodles and use the reserve broth to temper your eggs. Now add it all together. Top it with some green onions, sesame seeds, a little bit of chili oil oh my gosh have you ever seen anything so beautiful just 15 minutes my friends
Today we're making a staple comfort meal, but with a little twist, we're going to be making pesto chicken pot pie. It's the perfect weekend dinner. It's so flavorful and has amazing texture as well. So here's how you make it. Making sure to poke some holes, season your chicken breast or thighs with salt, pepper, and Cajun seasoning on both sides. We're going to cook the chicken in a Dutch oven with olive oil for about six minutes per side or until fully cooked. And you're going to remove your chicken, your cooked chicken from the pan and shred it using a fork or a stand mixer. In these clips, I'm using a regular pan, but you're going to see further along in the video that I switched to a Dutch oven because it wasn't big enough so don't make the same mistake that i made but once your chicken is shredded and fully cooked we're going to add our pesto into our shredded chicken make sure everything is nice and evenly coated and we're going to set it to the side in the same dutch oven with our chicken removed we're going to melt five tablespoons of butter over medium heat we're going to add our cubed potatoes as well as our diced onion and saute until translucent after you've sauteed that go ahead and add your minced garlic celery carrot thyme parsley red pepper flakes garlic powder onion powder cayenne salt and black pepper and we're going to stir well, saute for about three to five minutes. Now we're going to add three more tablespoons of butter in our skillet with the rest of our ingredients, and we're going to stir in our all-purpose flour to create a roux, and we're going to cook down our flour for about three more minutes. Now gradually pour in your chicken broth, then add your heavy cream and stir until combined. We're going to add our shredded chicken and bouillon cube to our Dutch oven, stirring to distribute everything evenly. We're gonna let our sauce simmer until thickened on medium heat, it really shouldn't take that long, and then we're going to reduce the heat to low, and we're going to simmer for about 15 more minutes. Lastly, taste your filling and see if you'd like to adjust the seasonings at all. I'm a firm believer that cooking is a personal experience and not everybody is going to like the same amount of seasoning. So go ahead and taste it and adjust it the way that you'd like. And then you're going to throw in your peas and stir. Now in your baking dish, you're going to place one sheet of slightly thawed puff pastry into the bottom of the dish, pour in your filling, and then you're going to cover the filling with another sheet of puff pastry. Seal the edges of your pie and we're going to cut a few slits on the top of the pastry to allow steam to escape. Brush on your egg wash and we're going to bake at 400 for about 30 to 35 minutes. Add garnish and you're done. This is not no regular mac and cheese, okay? This is the mac and cheese recipe that your grandmother used to make her friend, Mr. Charlie, that would come over and magically the lights would come back on the next day. I mean, this is a pretty good recipe. Let's get into it. So first, let's talk cheese, okay? I love to use mild cheddar in my mac and cheese, mozzarella, and Kobe Jack. I don't do all that sharp cheddar. I just be feeling like that is so nasty. And my secret ingredient is smoked cheddar, but you could also go in with some smoked gouda. And y'all know middle-aged black folk love all that sharp cheddar in the mac and cheese. We're not doing that. Love you, mama. Love you, auntie, but no. And the key is to shred it by hand. Bonus points if you have one of those machines or if you put your cheese grater inside of a Ziploc bag. Then we're making a bechamel sauce. If this intimidates you, then please go to the mac and cheese recipe pan on my profile four tablespoons of butter four tablespoons of flour and pour in some half and half and heavy cream and optional is adding in sour cream and egg that i whisk together season your sauce and allow it to get nice and creamy before adding in your cheese with the heat on and fold in some al dente cooked elbow noodles pour into a grease 9 by 13 baking dish and bake at 350 for 30 minutes or until it comes out looking like this wait before you dig in and thank me later citrus chicken topped with the ginger jalapeno sauce yes please to make our rice we're going to start by rinsing it always rinse the rice that you're cooking add in some coconut milk sugar a little bit of salt water stir the rice in bring it to a simmer cover and let it cook to make the marinade add some oil orange zest orange juice honey salt a little bit of pepper stir it all together and then you're going to reserve some of that marinade Add in the chicken, add in some garlic, toss it to coat, and then grill it up till the chicken is cooked through and golden brown on both sides. Add in mango, cucumber, the reserved marinade, and for our sauce, some ginger, jalapenos, scallions, oil, little salt, little sugar, and mix it all together. Take your chicken, add a little bit more marinade, toss it to coat, and then build your bowl. Coconut rice, chicken, mango, cucumber, cilantro, and of course, that beautiful sauce. Want to know how to make the juiciest burger? Grab a drink. I'll show you. Fat is flavor, so if you want a flavorful burger, you need to have the most amount of fat. I added butter to my cast iron, and I bought beef that was 20% fat, 80% lean. And then the second key to this is not packing your burger too densely. A dense burger is going to be a dry burger. If you can, stray away from a pre-made burger. I got a pound of beef, you know, with the styrofoam and the plastic wrap over it. I cut out a circle to make my beef patty, and I formed it as lightly as I could to keep it literally looking like ground beef. I think everybody has the idea that you roll it into a ball and like flatten it into a patty, but that could not be more wrong for a good burger. Steak seasoning is the best seasoning for a burger. I use Montreal, I think everybody has that in their house. I wanted to compare, so I also made burgers directly on the grate. I sprayed it first, but I prefer it made in the skillet with butter. It gave a more pronounced flavor. Don't fall victim to over flipping. Wait until it's cooked on one side and then flip it. You shouldn't have to flip it more. Pro tip, 
put your brioche bun right in the greasy pan. Stay tuned. Up next is going to be a video on how I top this.